right? Um, you have a crowd of, I don't know how many were here, 1,500, 1,000? I don't, I didn't count them. So don't make me look foolish for not knowing the number, but it was, but there's a lot of people and I want people around this community to, to, to own the Gophers, to come by, uh, get to know our players, get to know them on a personal level, watch them practice. Uh, and that's something I've always believed in. And I love that type of environment around here. Um, this is, you know, this is their team too. You know, that's the, they're the fans. They're the ones that uh, you know, they sit in those seats and, and they work hard to be able to, to buy season tickets and to be around our program. I want them here. Coach, I heard you on the radio on Sunday talk about the leadership council. When did you start doing that and what kind of influence did that have? Yeah, I started doing that back at Western Michigan, believe it or not, four years ago. And, uh, you know, when, when you kind of take over a team and it's not just flooded with, you know, fifth-year seniors that have all started, you know, 30-plus games, you've got to develop leadership within. Everybody has leadership qualities inside you, but we either choose to either bring it out or someone has to pull it out for us. And that's what it is. It's a leadership council for about 36 players that are all hand-picked. Um, Three-quarters of them are hand-picked by the players themselves, from freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. And the others are picked by me, uh, guys that I feel like have a chance to be a leader, uh, but we need to bring them along. So uh, we meet once a week. It's 32 classes, and uh, I teach it. It's a leadership class, and we don't get credits for it. Uh, I wish they did. Maybe I can become a professor too. I don't know. Uh, but it's, uh, uh, it's something to be able to develop, and we need to develop a ton of leadership on this football team, especially with the inexperience we have, um, and especially with a lot of the guys who possibly will play in the fall that are hurt. Do you like uh, Winfield in that nickel role? I do. I like him in a lot of roles. He, go back and forth? he can do a lot of things. You're going to see him in a lot of areas. Again, we don't, you know, we run a typical 4-3 defense, but we, we have a, a lack of depth in a lot of positions, right? And uh, that's a problem we have to fix later on with solutions and recruiting and development. But uh, right now, we have what we have. So Antoine's one of the best athletes and I think one of the best people. He is an unbelievable young man. He, he's in there on his own. He's working his tail end off. He's looking to master three different positions, and he's doing a tremendous job. we got him all over the field. But we're a traditional 4-3, but you might see, you know, we're going to do everything we can to get the best 11 athletes on the field. So we might be a 3-4 sometime, a 4-3, um, you know, it might be a 3-3-5 at times. I mean, we could be a lot of things in terms of personnel, uh, but we're still going to be based out of a 4-3 scheme. He, but he's versatile. He can do a lot of things. You guys have like a rush end with Devers and Coughlin. What kind of role do you see with that? What kind of play makers are those guys at that time? Well, it's a glorified linebacker, right? I mean, there's a lot of times that he's got to drop in coverage. There's a lot of times you got to cover one-on-one -on -one with the slot defender. So you've got to do a lot of things at that rush end position for us. Uh, it's a glorified linebacker. Would you like it to be a true rush end that's 255 pounds that can fly and bend? And Absolutely. Uh, but we are going to do uh, our system with, with the players we have and the skill we have, and we're going to plug them into those spots. Uh, but I love the progress of Devers. I love the progress of Carter. You talk about uh, selfless people. Um, you know, Carter's a linebacker, and he knows for him to get on the field and Kamal to get on the field and Celestine to get on the field and Jalen to get on the field, we all have to be able to sacrifice a little bit, but it's a fun role. The R is a fun role for us to rush at because you do so much. You're not just rushing straight up the field. You're stunting, you're going up the field, you're covering, you're dropping a man on man, you're dropping into his own, you're, you're doing a ton. So you're standing up, your hands on the ground, but there's a lot of things that that guy has to be able to do. What's the project you see uh, we're developing every day. We're developing every day. That's a position I think Coach Shine, I think Coach Shine is one of the best wide receiver coaches in the country. Uh, uh, to be able to develop Corey Davis, who didn't have any offers, two-star the entire time he was there. Uh, now he's a top 15 pick uh, in this year's NFL draft, probably. So uh, we, we, I start to see, you know, you know, TJ's doing a tremendous job. Six. Uh, he, he's starting to separate himself a little bit with his work ethic. We call him that. And then his how, um, his discipline to learn every, every, uh, 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 every position, learn every route, uh, because we want to move everybody around. You know, and even still, he's got to continue to get better. He's got to mature more uh, as he continues to go. Learn how to be able to fight through the adversity. Learn how to be able to work at an elite level, not just a good level. But I think Coach Simon is doing a tremendous job of molding that group. It's only been six practices, guys. A lot of these guys haven't haven't played a ton of football, um, and so this reminds me a lot of of going back a few years to build. Okay, here's what we got to do: ground floor, foundation, new systems on both sides, new players playing different positions uh, and playing sometimes for the first time. So. Um, it's fun. That's why you. That's why you coach those challenges. You know what I mean. If, if, if you walk into a classroom full of third graders and, and you teach them how to read, but everybody knows how to read, it's not that much fun. You got to teach them how to be able to do that, and that's what I enjoy about being out here on the sixth day of practice. You mentioned uh, Matt Simon. Like, what, what kind of impression did he make when he was when you were his coach? <laughs> 
he was one of those guys that um, that w was resilient. You know, uh, he wasn't the fastest, wasn't the biggest, but came from Farmington, Minnesota, and he caught every ball and he worked his tail end off. And there wasn't anything he, he didn't think he couldn't do. You know, he, he was going to do it all. And uh, he brings that same tenacity, that same uh, teaching style uh, to our players. He's a phenomenal teacher. Every one of these coaches, what I love about them is they're phenomenal teachers. They're not just coaches. They're not X's and O's, just X's and O's guys. These guys are embedded into their life, all four areas, academically, athletically, socially, and spiritually. We're teaching them every day in all four of those areas, not just football. That's the fun part. Is your pace and tempo, have they picked up what you want there? We need to get about 14 to 15 more minutes cut off. Now, the first practice, if you guys were around, I told them about 31, 32 minutes had to come off. Uh, now we're only about 15, 16, but it's, it's the downtime. It's the horn blows, we go. We, we are not even close to the change of pace that we need when that horn blows. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're getting closer, but about 16 minutes, we still gotta be able to shave off that practice. Uh, and they're starting to learn that. Um, I think being familiar with with where we are at practice. You know, we practice in three different venues in six practices. But this is our third time, second time, third, second or third time being on this field. So now they're starting to know where to go when the horn blows. Is that standing around time? About, I think it is, yes, in terms of how we dissect practice. Standing around time, uh, the, the, the period length, depending on what we're getting in, what we've accomplished, how many reps we've gotten, especially the program part at the end, individual drills, uh, and then especially when we're in team periods and seven on sevens. Being able to accomplish those six reps, right? Every single one of those reps get cut down 10 seconds in between, really adds up over a course of an hour and a half practice. Look like the time frame. Hour and a half, that's how we want to be, hour and a half. Now there's gonna be times we go over uh, that I want to go over, that if we're gonna play it at the end like that, I want to extend drives and do those things, but give rest in between, that's fine. But our tempo, we need to condition during football, not just conditioning at the end, just to run to run. We're gonna condition when we play football. And I think that's that's the fundamental part that we have. Look like uh, Quinn Oslin looked like, at least he has a surgery, he looked like things are going okay for him. Yeah, he's going okay. He's gonna be out a, a few weeks here, but um, he's gonna heal up nicely. And, our trainers have him covered. You know, I'm just I'm so proud of the offensive line. I can't tell you how proud I am of these guys. I, I don't. We. I need to take five of you who would volunteer through the practice. Maybe you don't have to hit as hard, but just run as much as they do, and uh, so you can feel it. You know what I mean? And uh, that'd be kind of cool. That'd be a nice little study, a little internship. You know, Rachel Barbeau did that. You know, she practiced with the high school team in training camp. So uh, maybe we can get a few of you to volunteer to do that. You don't have to hit us. Just go through it and let us coach. Cultural. Positive surprises. You know what, there, there's, I tell you, Demi Croft had a really nice day today. I was really proud of him. He's taking a big step forward, and, and, and him and Connor are, are learning the offense. Every day there's completely new plays that are coming in, but I thought they did a nice job today. I really like Eric Carter's work ethic. I thought he came out today and did a tremendous job. Um, you know, when I sit there and look at the running back, I thought Rodney had a nice day. Rodney ran the ball hard. I thought his vision was better. I think he's getting more comfortable with our inside zone and how we block it in our blocking schemes. I thought he had a nice job with his vision today in terms of being very patient, poised, and uh, letting the whole play develop instead of just, oh my gosh, you gotta get in that hole. Let the whole play develop, and then that's when he shines. And you can see a bunch of runs he had where if he just were hits it with his head down, he's not gonna have a chance, but he's so patient in between there. He really runs well with the football. Yeah, he's got one or two points. Yeah, they're doing. They're, they're progressing the way we need to. But uh, Lingen, you know, he's just got a foot injury that takes a while. And the one thing about that injury is, if you come back too quick, you could be right back to step one that quickly. Uh, so just like all of our guys, our training staff taking care of them. Uh, you know, we're never going to put a player in jeopardy of being hurt out here or re-injuring it. We're going to make sure they're completely healed. Now, football's a game; you're going to be hurt. You know, if, if you don't, if you feel really good coming off this practice, if you didn't practice hard enough. You know, but there's a difference between hurt and being injured. Those injured guys, we got to make sure we take care of them, make sure they're ready to go and put them back on the field when they're ready. You got one more? Kunle, the cornerback, permanently? Or I'm sorry, say it again? Uh, Kunle is the yeah. red corner. You know, the whole thing with us is, is you're going to see, you're probably going to see Antoine Winfield play corner. We, we're not very deep there either, all right? So we've got to get, continue to create depth, playing guys at multiple positions in the secondary, creating linebackers at different positions. Uh, and we've got to learn kind of whole, have like a holistic approach to this whole thing. Learn more conceptually of where you fit rather than just the one position. Learn this and that's all you have to do. Same thing with the wideouts, right? We want our team to learn football, situational football. Learn our schemes, not just what do I do on this play when this is called. Because then you're just, then you're just running plays. You're not playing football.
You know, football's about situations and how our scheme fits into that situation. Thank you, guys. Yeah, guys, roll the boat. Just got your mouth. Thanks for your time. Thanks for being here, guys.